we're going to rebuild this valve which came up the 1855 but it's the same on like 17 18 19 55 22 55 the whites 285 2105 etc and the first thing we're going to do is just take everything off of it and then we'll start building back as we clean it up so on mine here i have these adapters which had changed it over to JIC and let's see here so we'll get those out I have everything pre-loosened for you so that you don't have to watch but I should note that if you're going to clamp this in a vise I don't like to clamp on the machine surfaces because if you mess that up you're gonna have a lot of problems so just do your best if you have to put it in a vise that way then put a piece of belting around it or something so it doesn't uh, mar up this surface because you don't want to do that this side everything's recessed but over here it seals right against the machine surface so you don't want to screw that up so we'll take these out again the original had like an o-ring elbow on it i think made into the hose but i do these adapters that works better now we'll take out our thermal relief valves and there were several different styles of these over the years and there's two o-rings on this this one actually started to come off it's supposed to sit down in that clear groove there but we need those off for that reason. Again, that one started to come off, but that's fine. There we go. Okay, now this ball lives on top of that. And it goes up in here. Now we can start stripping down the rest of this. Inside here should be a poppet and a spring. And you'll see what that looks like in a minute. There we go. O-ring started coming off. But here is your spring and poppet. And all the poppet is is a valve. And it goes down in there and shuts off the oil so that it doesn't uh, come back through. So. If you have a situation where you raise up the implement and as soon as you let off the lever, the implement falls back down, your poppet is probably bad. I have uh, that problem on the 4180. It seems like it eats poppets. And the only thing I can think of is that maybe because the 4180 uses a cable from the cab to the valve, that maybe when you're in neutral, it's not in true neutral on the valve. And it's letting a little bit of oil run past here, holding it open part way, and that's generating enough heat to melt these down. But sometimes you do need to replace these. But we'll set that aside. And we'll turn it around. And we'll take out our restrictor. And it's the same way. There's a spring. And they pop it. Oop. There it shot out of there. And we'll take that apart after a while because there's a ring in there. But that does that. Now, what we have down in here too to come out is the seats for the poppets. Now, you should be able to push from one side. So here's the seat that goes with that ball and then the ball can land in here and it's got an o-ring on it and then we have my little magnet here we go this piece that goes in the middle and then on this side we have a seat which there we go i think i felt it knock loose come on This one is shorter, and you can get it. There we go. But there is a seat for the other poppet. 
And so if you look at the orientation of how they are, I'll try to get that visualized for you. They lay in there like this. And then this ball and retainer here go in the one fitting hole. And then that ball can get in there. So don't forget about those. Now this should be totally empty. This should be all empty. The last thing to take apart is our spool itself. All right, now before we get the spool out, we'll take this pin out. Probably would be handier with the pliers. But we'll take this pin out. And the nice thing about these is the remote levers are forked. So you can put this pin in and then just slide them into the fork so you don't have to try to get this tiny cotter pin in with it on there. And to do that, I believe it is an inch and five sixteenths. And here again, I pre-loosened it in the vise before we started. All right. And here's our spool. I have talked about this before, but if you're going to do more than one valve at once, like I'm doing on this tractor, do one valve at a time because these are precisely machined to this housing and if you swap them you'll probably have a leak there is some stuff we have to disassemble in here so we will do that in a minute we'll clamp this in the vise and but we'll get this cleaned up so it's ready to go back together also before you clean in the spool bore we have some stuff so we don't lose and we gotta get that pulled out of there Behind this is an O-ring to replace. Also, before you clean up, there's an O-ring in here. So, take this loose. Almost. There we go. Okay, that's a thicker O-ring, so pay attention to that when you go to put it back together. Let's go ahead and build most of this back, and then we'll work on that spool. So in your little kit, which I've already opened, we'll dump out the contents here on the table. You will have pieces extra that you don't need. And one thing will be these smaller size poppets because over the years there were different valves that used different sizes and this one uses the larger ones i think everything i have uses the larger ones and it's a shame because those are the things that are the most expensive in these kits some place used to you could get the kit without the poppets and it was a lot cheaper all right so now it's just basically a matching game this one is the one we took out of here, so we will put that in. We'll give it a little bit of lube. And it'll probably be a little bit of a trick to get it in there. Especially when you only have half a thumb. We don't want to cut it. We just got to roll it in there. This is kind of like the same situation or technique as the piston rod seal on those hydraulic cylinders. You got to get it folded in there under a much thicker outer wall.
Jump in there, buddy. There. Okay. So that is in there for later, so we don't forget. Now we will put the one in here again. And we need to match this up with something in our pile of stuff. This one's a little easier because you can just tuck it down in that groove down in there if you can see that. And then put this on top of it. And now it is in there. Let's go ahead and put our uh, seats back in for our poppets. I suppose you can do this in any order you want, but just so you get all the pieces in there. So get these old O-rings off. Clean that up a little bit. And then this one should be this O-ring. So we'll put it on there. Just like so. We'll give it a little lube job here. We'll put it in with the hole facing the bottom of the valve, which is the top in this case. And you gotta get it back in there to where it goes. You will probably need ooh, to use something to push it. Okay, now you see how that is back in there where it is. It's the flat side down. Now from the other way, we will put in our put in our spacer. Get this O-ring off of here carefully. Trying not to destroy any of the good fingers we have left. Come on. There we go. It's easier when they just tear. So now we are ready for this O-ring. We'll put a little bit of lube on it. We will put this in there. This one is hard to do because it wants to tip when you get it in there. Okay, so the moral of the story is you want to get that tap back in there gently with something, but you can't go wild with it or you'll ruin the seat and then your poppet won't work against it. So get that tap back where it belongs and now that part is done. Next we will go on to putting some of this other stuff back in. So here is our old poppet and spring which we will save because poppets are expensive. And here is our new poppet. And we will put that in here as such. Now we will get this O-ring and backup ring off of here. There is a rubber backup ring. And it's fine again if it breaks. Clean this up. And we need to get that out of our kit here. Put the backup ring on first. Which may or may not be easy. We don't want to tear it. 
So I'll just kind of work it around. Come on. I just got this pick in the threads and I'm kind of using the side of the pick to push it down. That way it doesn't doesn't touch the rubber and tear it. I'll put this on. And it looks like we're there on that one. Let's give it a little bit of greasing. Put this in. We'll put this in the vise later and tighten everything down permanent. But we want to make sure that we just put it in for now. Uh, I guess before we do the other side, because it's more involved, we'll go ahead and pop these little thermal relief valves in. They've just got two little O-rings on each one of them. And they're so tiny, it's kind of hard to deal with. But you just have to do the best you can. Clean on this a second. Also, when I say I'm cleaning on it, I'm talking about like maybe spray it with some brake clean and then wipe it with a soft rag. I'm not saying use emery cloth and grind on it because you won't be happy with the results of that. Now, this is a trick. Because if you do it wrong, it'll probably go flying across the room. There we go. There's the little one. Now, the bigger one. And that's pretty well ready to put back in there. Give it just a shade of magical lubricant. Don't want to really overdo it, but. We'll go back and finish those off later. Let's do the other one. Put this back on. There's one. And there's that one. Just a little bit, not too much. Don't really want that in there. And we'll put this one back in. We'll give it the double check tightening after a while. Now, another thing that we can put in, but not forget, because if we flip this over, it'll fall out is this ball here and this retainer so we'll go with that it's down in there now but let's not forget about it and flip it over like we will as a matter of fact since this one has these i want to put new o-rings on these fittings but for now i'm going to screw this one down in so that we don't lose that other thing I'll go get the new ones here in a minute. Although these don't look bad, but while I'm here, we're gonna do that. Now, for this side, we have a spring and a poppet to go in, but there's more stuff in, the, uh, in this piece. We have this restrictor, which we need to take apart because there's an O-ring inside in addition to the two on the outside here. 
So let's get this taken apart and uh, cleaned up, put back together. All right, to do this, we're going to lightly clamp it in the vise. We're going to get the right size wrench, which is 9 sixteenths. We've got to take the stop nut off because we have to actually screw this, screw this in and come out the other way to get to the O-ring. So, nice and dirty. But that's fine. It's clean now. We're going to go in. There we go. Okay, now. Alright. So we screwed that in. And this is what comes out. It's got this little plunger or whatever you want to call it made on the end of it. But down in there is an O-ring. So we need to get that picked out of there. There we go. And there is also a backup ring in there. So you don't want to forget that. And it just so happens in our kit we have a backup ring and an O-ring. So this is kind of a trick to get this, both of these down in there. And it's kind of a trick for me to do it in such a way that you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. I think my backup ring is in there. And I'll put our O-ring in. There we go. We got that in there. So we got that O-ring and backup ring in there. Now we're ready to put this plunger back in and adjust it about like what you had if you want it the same way otherwise you'll have to mess with it when it's on the tractor and it's easy to get to it's in the back so you can adjust it accordingly if not basically halfway is a good uh, rule to follow I guess to start with put it where it's about half in the travel have a little more there we go. And we'll put this back on. And we'll probably have to clamp this in the vise again because it's going to want to spin the, the whole thing, I'm afraid. Yep. Okay, so now backup ring, O ring on here. I hope I can edit this video to make somewhat of sense because this is kind of like the attention deficit valve rebuild here. I'm jumping all over the place, but whatever. Do it however you want. This is just for entertainment. All right, this is ready to go on. And again, we will tighten that up in a minute in the vise. Now this assembly is totally ready, except for the spool. And we will work on that now. That is a endeavor in itself, so. Let's get going. Okay, this is not going to be the best camera footage because I'm going to have to set the camera down and I don't think you'll be able to see very good. I'm going to take this cap off. Inside there is a snap ring 
and another little piece that you have to take loose and then there's three steel balls in here and you want to try to get this off without losing these three balls so it's going to be a trick sometimes but i'll show you what i do in a second i hope you can see kind of what's going on so we'll take this plug out of the end then what we want to do this is actually your detent and so like now it's in the detent position and we have to do several operations here at once and i like to put this rag around here in the hopes that maybe it will catch some of the balls if they fly away but it doesn't always work that way. I also like to be holding a magnet close by because that might catch some steel balls as they fall. So we'll leave that there. And we gotta get in there and get that snap ring whilst pulling down. We gotta push down on this plate while we're taking the snap ring out and I should have went and got my better pliers here my little snap ring pliers from Chinesium land are not the greatest okay snap ring is off and if you hold tension on this plate it should stay there all the time but and of course now when I want it to let loose it won't there we go Okay, I'm not too worried about the snap ring because it comes with the kit. Now, see how it jumped up? When we take this off, there's going to be three steel balls that fall out. There's one. There's two in my hand. And it's holding magnetically. The magnet's strong enough. Let's try to get them. There's two. Let's get three. There we go. We caught all three, thank goodness. And this one's kind of cruddy in here. That's kind of unusual. We got this washer or plate, whatever you want to call it. It's got a hole in it because you got to go through here with an Allen wrench and you can adjust your detent pressure. So we got to take this out, washer. Then we have a spring and this piece here that is tapered and it is actually what forces on those balls and forces them out of the holes and into different grooves in this cap and that's what gives you your detent positions so we'll take this out and we'll go fishing some more here's a little spacer piece that has actually got an allen head on one side got an o-ring on it that we have to replace it's flat on this side to engage a slot in the piece that actually does your uh it's got threads on it and it's how you adjust your detent pressure so after this comes out now we need to take this whole piece off it's threaded into the spool and it's under the spring pressure so Instead of clamping on it or doing something stupid, I like to find something that fits in the hole of where the ball was. And then just get it broke loose. And now, you really need both hands to hold because it's going to go flying if you don't watch. Because this spring is pretty stout. So gently... There we go. Now we're out. So on here you have a spring with two different size washers. And then here you have this piece that's got an O-ring on it. So we need to change that. But then down in here, I will show you since we are this far, is the piece 
that uh, that little spacer thing engaged that has the Allen head on one end and it goes way down in here and it turns this slotted piece and that holds back on another spring and seat which you will see in a second there's a spring oh, and the seat didn't come out okay let's turn it over come on there we go and in here is a little metal poppet and by screwing down on against this is how you change the amount of pressure it takes to overcome the detent so you want to make sure you get all that stuff back in there like it's supposed to be but there's really no serviceable piece i mean the seat looks fine it's not like it's chewed up i guess if that's destroyed you need to but now we need to put that down in there we need to make sure that it landed square i can't see from i'm going to put back in this slotted screw Switch to an actual screwdriver. And it would be cool if the spring was in the center. So you probably want to remember about how far you had it if you want it back like what you had before for pressure. But you can always adjust this on the tractor. Uh, so do what you want. Now, we will start servicing our other pieces and then put them back on. Okay, so we'll start with this. Spring, two washers, and this deal right here. It has an O-ring on it. So we must replace it. And that should be this one. Should it? Yes. It shall. Okay, so there's that. So we will go ahead and put this, screw this back down, and then we'll keep building. We need to clean this spring up a little bit. And we'll put a little bit of juice on here. Okay. Now don't forget, this is under spring pressure, so you have to push down while turning to at least get it started. There we go, I think. So don't let go of it or it'll go shooting away. that's in there now for probably the most aggravating one of the whole outfit is so tiny it is very frustrating to get this off and it's easier just to bust it okay so I got this on there and I went ahead and got o-rings on these two fittings I'm about out of camera so I'm trying to work quickly this little piece we need to put down in there uh, to engage in that slotted screw thing. So we'll do that and then we will put in this and then I will show you how we finish it off. There we go, we're engaged in that screw. Now we put in this plunger and spring. And now for the hardest, most miserable part of this whole thing is putting the balls back in. Remember this plate goes on top of that spring like such, but we also have to get the balls in these holes 
and that tapered piece is going to want to naturally force them out. So this is going to be a trick and usually I take grease and uh, you know put in the holes to kind of hold them in and hopefully you don't lose any. And of course now that I don't want to do this this way, it's not going to work out for me. That tapered piece has fallen down in there too far. And uh, what it's going to do is it's not going to let us get the ball in there. So i got to push up on it. You see how that comes up out of there if I push on it? Well, that's what the balls are going to do. When you hold it up, now, I know that's not very good camera work, but if I take my finger off this hole, one of the balls is going to fall out. So now, I've got all three in. I need to put this cap down over it, hopefully, and I'm in the right spot. Now, I need to force down on that plate and get the spring or the snap ring put back in. And this is a real trick to get everything the way it needs to be. So what I can do... This is dangerous because if I let off of this, it's going to fly up and bye-bye steel balls. But I think I got it. I think I got it. Yes. I got that plate depressed out in there and the snap ring in. And now the cap is on. And we should be good to go. And it should have two, two positions. Yep. There we go. Okay, thank goodness. Now we are finally ready to put the spool back in. And just ever so gently work it through the new, two new O-rings in there, remember. You should be good to go. Now I need to put it in the vise and tighten everything up. But we should have a fully rebuilt valve. And we can go put it on the tractor now. Only thing left to do is to put our little pin in. Oh, and our cap. I forgot our cap in the end. But we can put our pin in that engages our lever. And other than that, we should be good to go. And there we have it. And there's a position. I'll get something that I can actually grab with. But you should be able to shift through the different lever positions. See, there's one. There's out. The first, I guess, whichever way it would be, that would actually be if you were pulling the lever back, I believe. There's neutral, and there's the opposite way. So, that's neutral. So we'll leave it there. But we are good to go. I did not get footage of putting these back on, <clears throat> these hydraulic valves back on, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just the opposite of the way we took them off. I got three 
of the lines hooked back up to the remote outlets and the fourth one I went and got a new one made so that it matches because I mentioned a while back that bothered me all the time that one was 3 8 line so we're gonna go ahead and put this on and then we should be ready to put the oil back in the tractor and check our work and see if it leaks but I'm excited because it's already much much cleaner than it was so Hopefully it stays that way. And it's going. Just a matter of getting in there to it. And we need to tighten this in. Okay, so we got the pump hooked up again. We'll put our oil back in the tractor. The pump makes short work of it. And you don't have to heave the bucket around, so that's nice. All right, so we got that all the way in there with only a minor oil spill when the hose jumped out, but that's fine. So now we are ready for the moment of truth. Let's start it up and see if we get any leaks. Let's put the hitch up. Get us more room. And at first glance, I don't see any leaks, which is good because it was just pouring oil out of that uh, fitting on this manifold block before we started so I think we're looking good cycle the hoses or the remotes I think we got Oil everywhere it needs to be. Everything looks dry up there. I think we're ready to go ahead and slap the sheet metal back on it this time, and hopefully that'll be the last time this spring. Well, I think we're back in action here. I got everything put back, and finally got it hooked up to this planter so I can start working on it. I'm going to redo all these lines because this is just a mess and I've got something in mind and I've already got the hoses bought so you'll see that in another video and hopefully this thing will be ready to go in short order and there will be more videos of it. So anyway, as always, thank you for watching my videos. If you haven't, already hit the thumbs up and like the video hit subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next and i'll see you in the next one